Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. Well, I'm back with another Boltony. They impressed me with the first one they sent me and now they have sent me this, the uh, their interpretation of the Second World War watch called the A11. Now, just for transparency, they have sent me this watch for free. I don't have to send it back, but you will get my honest opinion on it. But first, let's touch on the A11. Perhaps you don't know the story of these from the Second World War. So let me just give you a, a very, very quick history of the A11. So during the war, uh, the American military uh, issued a request for a watch to be made that had certain prerequisites that they needed and they approached Elgin, uh, Waltham and Bullover to produce these watches. It had to have a minimum of 15 joules. It had to have hacking because it had to have precision timing synchronization for their troops. It had to have a center seconds hand. It had to have 10 minute uh, uh, demarcations on the minute track and the rest was a bit open to interpretation so some had loom some didn't some had a coined edge like this one you can see some didn't some were dustproof as well and some were waterproof uh, so there is a lot of these still around uh, as you can see on screen now I've actually got one so the one on the uh, right of the picture is my uh, bullover version now it is non-running uh, it hasn't seen military service because you would be able to tell from what it says on the back. They're normally stamped, uh, but I'm very pleased to own one. And that is uh, being set up eventually to be restored or try to see if I can get it running over on the main channel. So I will be comparing a like for like. But what you can certainly see is the size difference. So the original ones in the 1940s. Uh, the case size was 32 millimeters. It's hard to believe that a military would ask for all these, you know, clear reading watches and so on and so forth, and they come up with a 32 mil case. But that was uh, the sort of fashion or the watch sizes of that era. What Boltony have done is basically took the idea of that watch and the design of that watch and bring it up to date with modern technology like uh, uh, an automatic movement. Uh, you've got hand winding, you've got hacking. Uh, you've got a sapphire crystal and stainless steel case because the originals, I think they were just a brass case with um, uh, either chrome or um, nickel plating. I think it was nickel. I don't think chrome was around back then so much. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's the little history of the A11. It's uh, adorned by collectors of military and watches alike. So let's have a look closer at this Boltony. Let's start off with the dimensions. You saw it next to the original and it did look a big watch. But in today's standards, this would probably be classed as quite a small watch. It comes in at a very pleasing, for me at least, 38 millimeters in diameter, which is a lovely sweet spot. It is 12.5 millimeters thick, 46 mil lug to lug, so perfect there. And a very lug width pleasing 20 millimeters, meaning you can put a whole plethora of straps on this one, no problem at all. Notice that big crown? Well, that crown is 6.5 millimeters in diameter. So here's the sizing on my wrist. My wrist is seven inches or 18 centimeters. Look, perfection as far as I'm concerned. The perfect size and the watch looks fantastic, really. Uh, let's get the price out of the way and then I'm gonna go really deep into this watch in the sense that it is gonna end up on the microscope. Here we are on Boltony's official website, that is the boltony.com. These are their military watch collection. And uh, yeah, they've got some really cool models. I particularly like this one here. Yes, lots, but of course we're here to see the A11. You can see the price there. It is 175 US dollars. That is around about 145 UK pounds. If we click into it, we also see that they have a different dial color should you so wish shipping is worldwide for free however you may get your tax in your country when this one arrives uh, so do bear that in mind right back to the watch let's talk more on the dial well it's a very simple affair and of course the original a11s had to be you just had to be able to tell the time pure and simple and that is exactly what this watch is doing Nice and clear printed Arabic numerals. Very, very legible, of course. Um, I do like the sword type hands. Uh, again, that is uh, exact replication of the originals. 
Uh, also, the black second hand, well on mine it's not completely black, it is uh, the same colour throughout. Uh, this one of course has got the, the off-white tip going on there as well. The minute tracker we were talking about earlier, well it has got the 10 minute uh, markers, but it does have that lovely military vibe about it. Now earlier versions from Boltony actually said automatic down at 6, but they've now deleted that and I think that's a nice touch because you just got Boltony at 12 and a nice clear simple dial and that's what certainly an A11 was all about. Now then I've gone one step further here and I've removed the watch from its case and put it on the microscope so we can have a much closer look at it. Now first of all there's a slight thinning there at the point on the loom that is the only negative that I can honestly find on this dial. The printing is very crisp, uh, there's no marks, there's no dust particles, um, yeah it's absolutely sweet as a nut and to prove that let's get just that a little bit closer. Now how about that? Uh, that's just their printing for Boltony of course but I'm going to show you the indices here we go. Look just for printing I think that's fantastic. This is a £150 watch uh, at that price point I'd expect to be seeing some issues and I don't really. I mean here if I'm nitpicking the edge of that uh, minute hand mm, and there's the slight thinning I've got to get it in focus of course but the slight thinning of the loom um, yeah very crisp lovely dial I've seen far worse on far better quality watches hopefully you're enjoying that if you do leave your comments below I'll try and show more watches uh, under the microscope in future uh, reviews. To finish the dial detail here we are with a loom shot now printed on the dial uh, is C3 and you can see that this fades very quickly always does when they're printed in about six minutes my camera cannot really pick it up however it does still burn fairly reasonably uh, I've been waking up in the middle of the night and I can still read it despite it being a little faint back outside where you can now see that absolutely beautiful coined edge to the case. I really do like coined edges and they've done it very well on this. The whole case is completely highly polished. There is not a brush surface to be found anywhere other than the case back. So here's the case back and it is a kind of a brushed, well it's a turned finish really. But look, you've also got the coined edge on the bottom as well which is quite cool to see. Now they have engraved the uh, case back. It's kind of giving it that military feel because the original A11s would have had military stamps. Of course we've got Boltony A11 and some various uh, fictitious um, serial numbers and then along with the uh, part number which on this is a 2023 because that is the year it was made. But what you ask lies underneath that case back well let's go back on the microscope and i'll show you and yes it's that forever reliable seiko but this one is an nh38 the significance of an nh38 is that it doesn't have the ghost position for a date this is a genuine no date movement just wiggle it there if you're lucky you can see the magic fingers or the pull levers which was a revolutionary invention by seiko on how to wind a mainspring automatically. A couple of more things before I test that movement. This watch is fitted with a domed sapphire crystal. You can see it there. It has AR coating uh, and it is protruding possibly about one millimeter above the case or thereabouts. And of course the watch is fitted with this black leather strap. The strap actually is nice and supple. I've got no reason to doubt it being leather. It is 3.5 millimeters thick, so quite a thick one too. Uh, how it stands the test of time, well, I don't know. Right, let's go to the bench, test that movement. It's time for the time grapher, the bit that I like the most. Now these sections are speeded up over three minutes of recording to get a good average. And you can see here that this in dial up is absolutely sweet as a nut. It is between one and two seconds so 
brilliant to see that certainly from a Seiko out the packet now is it going to get any worse or any better in different positions here we are with what we call pendant up which is also crown up these are a little bit more stressing because gravity starts taking hold and again you can see the parameters are fairly decent amplitude drops slightly but I'd expect that and then crown down again this can be quite stressful and you are seeing the results of that there so it is losing some beat error and it also is losing some rate but still well 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 within Seiko parameters so I'm not too upset with that however at dial down position well this again is still in uh, spec but to see plus 19 that is quite uh, horrendous really something is going on uh, above the balance wheel somewhere or above that on the movement so I don't know what that necessarily is and I'm very doubtful I'm ever gonna know other than trying to give it a service guess I can just have a quick look on the microscope just to see you never know there might be something obvious on the top of the balance well personally or unfortunately I can't see anything we are focused at the moment on the hairspring and then we'll focus in on the jewel on the top but everything looks fine but then it would look fine really but it's worth you never know could have just been a stray fiber from when I was looking at it earlier now as I'm a hobbyist watchmaker and most of that is done on my other channel my retro watches if you've not already subscribed there will be links below I have all the tools and things like that available and here I'm just showing how responsible I am really I've taken the case back off I'm now re-greasing the gasket in order to give it its 100 meter of waterproofing I don't think I said that in the review but that's what this watch has got so I'll refit the gasket and then because of the way the case back is uh, with that um, coined edge I can only get it on and off with a sticky ball but that's absolutely fine it should stand up to its waterproofing not that I show any watch water never have done probably never will I think I've shown you everything on this watch apart from the packaging which you can see going on here so what do I think I think this watch is great for the money uh, it's fantastic if you're looking for that you know inspired uh, military watch with all the modernization of a case size reliability and design uh, Bolton are hitting the nail on the head every time by the looks of things and I've been suitably impressed um, yeah there will be links below should you want to pick one of these up uh, the link to the boltony.com website is not affiliated at all um, I will find them on Aliexpress I think as well and leave a link just in case you wish to pick this one up it is a cracking little field watch um, and if you're into your collecting then this could be a good addition to your collection okay if you've liked the review all I ask hit the thumbs up it really is important leave comments below I do read every single one I'll try to reply to as many as I can if you're new to the channel and you have enjoyed this video of course consider subscribing don't forget also guys to check out my main channel my retro watches where you can see me repair watches honestly and with all mistakes included thank you and I'll see you in the next video bye for now